This is the end that he that dresseth the vine, and he that takes upon him either to tame colts, or to train up dogs, doth aim at. What else doth the education of children, and all learned professions tend unto? Certainly then it is that, which should be dear unto us also. If in this particular it go well with thee, care not for the obtaining of other things. But is it so, that thou canst not but respect other things also? Then canst not thou truly be free? Then canst thou not have self-content? Then wilt thou ever be subject? For it is not possible, but that thou must be envious, and jealous, and suspicious of them whom thou knowest can bereave thee of such things. And again, a secret undermanner of them. To be short, he must of necessity be full of confusion within himself, and often accuse the gods, whosoever stands in need of these things. But if thou shalt honor and respect thy mind only, that will make thee acceptable towards thyself, towards thy friends very tractable, and conformable and concordant with the gods. Yeah, under, above, and about are the motions of the elements, but the motion of virtue, is none of those motions, but is somewhat more excellent and divine, whose way to speed and prosper in it must be through a way that is not easily comprehended. Five, who can choose but wonder at them? They will not speak well of them that are at the same time with them, and live with them. Yet they themselves are very ambitious, that they that shall follow, as if a man should grieve that he hath not been commended by them, that lived before him. Tvevai, do not ever conceive anything impossible to man, which by thee cannot, or not without much difficulty be effected, but whatsoever in general thou canst conceive possible and proper unto Six. Suppose that at the palestra somebody hath all to torn thee with his nails, and hath broken thy head. Well, thou art wounded. Yet thou dost not exclaim. Thou art not offended with him. Thou dost not suspect him for it afterwards, as one that watcheth to do thee a mischief. Ye even then, though thou dost thy best to save thyself from him, yet not from him as an enemy. It is not by way of any suspicious indignation, but by way of gentle and friendly declination. Keep the same mind and disposition in other parts of thy life also. For many things there be, which we must conceit and apprehend, as though we had had to do with an antagonist at the palestra. For as I said, it is very possible for us to avoid and decline, though we neither suspect nor hate. If anybody shall reprove me, and shall make it apparent unto me, that in any either opinion or action of mine I do err, I will most gladly retract. For it is the truth that I seek after, by which I am sure that never any man was hurt, and as sure that he is hurt that continueth in any error or ignorance whatsoever. Chi, I for my part will do what belongs unto me. As for other things, whether things unsensible or things irrational, or if rational, yet deceived and ignorant of the truth, for as for those creatures which are not endued with reason and all other things and matters of the world whatsoever, I freely and generously, as one endued with reason of things that have and as for men, towards them as naturally partakers of the same reason, my care is to carry myself sociably. But whatsoever it is that thou art about, remember to call upon the gods. And as for the time how long thou shalt live to do these things, let it be altogether indifferent unto thee, for even three such hours are sufficient. Psy, Alexander of Maston, and he that dressed his mules, when once dead both came to one for either they were both resumed into those original rational essences from whence all things in the world are propagated, or both after one fashion were scattered into atoms. Psi consider how many different things, whether they concern our bodies or our souls, in a moment of time come to pass in every one of us, and so thou wilt not wonder if many more kid. If any should put this question unto thee how this word Antoninus is written, wouldst thou not presently fix thine intention upon it, and utter out in order every letter of it? And if any... Is it not a cruel thing to forbid men to affect those things, which they conceive to agree best with their own natures, 
and to tend most to their own proper good and behoof. But thou after a sort, for surely they are led unto those sins whatsoever they be, as to their proper good and commodity. But it is not so, thou wilt object perchance. Thou therefore teach them better, and make it appear unto them. But be not thou angry with them. Death is a cessation from the impression of the senses, the tyranny of the passions, the errors of the mind, and the servitude of the body. A. Eh. If in this kind of life thy body be able to hold out, it is a shame that thy soul should faint first, and give over, take heed, lest of a philosopher thou become a mere caesar in time. For it may happen if thou dost not take heed. Keep thyself therefore truly simple, good, sincere, brave, free from all ostentation, a lover of that which is just, religious. Endeavor to continue such, as philosophy, hadst thou wholly and constantly applied thyself unto it, would have made and secured thee. Worship the gods, procure the welfare of men. This life is short. Charitable actions and a holy disposition is the only fruit of this earthly life. Qua. Do all things as becomes the disciple of Antoninus Pikes. Remember his resolute constancy in things that were done by him according to reason, his equability in all things, his sanctity, the cheerfulness of his countenance, again, how he was no backbiter, nor easily frightened, nor suspicious, and in his language free from all affectation and curiosity, and how easily he would content how able to endure labor, how patient, able through his spare diet to continue from morning to evening without any necessity of withdrawing before his accustomed hours to the necessities of nature, how he would bear with them that with all boldness and liberty opposed his opinions, and even rejoice if any man could better advise him, and lastly how religious he was without super. All these things of him remember, that whensoever thy last hour shall come upon thee, it may find thee, as it did him, ready for it in the possession of a good conscience. 6. Stir up thy mind, and recall thy wits again from thy natural dreams and visions, and when thou art perfectly awoken, and canst perceive that they were but dreams that troubled thee, I consist of body and soul. Unto my body all things are indifferent, for of itself it cannot affect one thing more than another with apprehension of any difference. As for my mind, all things which are not within it, as long as the foot doth that which belongeth unto it to do, and the hand that which belongs unto it, their labor whatsoever it be, is not unnatural. So a man as long as he doth that which is proper unto a man, his labor cannot be against nature. And if it be not against nature, then neither is it hurtful unto him. But if it were so that happiness did consist in pleasure, how came notorious robbers, impure, abominable livers, parasites, and tyrants, in so large a measure to have their part of Dost thou not see how even those that profess mechanic arts, though in some respect they be no better than mere idiots, yet they stick close to the course of their trade, neither can they find in their Asia rope, what are they, but as corners of the whole world, of which the whole sea is but as one drop, and the great mount of those, but as a clod, as all present, all petty things, all things that are soon altered, soon perished, and all things come from one beginning, either all severally and particularly deliberated and resolved upon by the general ruler and governor of all, or all by necessary consequences so that the dreadful hiatus of a gaping lion, and all poison, and all hurtful things, are but, as the thorn and the mire, the necessary consequences of goodly fair things. Think not of these, therefore, as things contrary to those which thou dost much honor and respect, but consider in thy mind the true fountain of all. Keth that seeth the things that are now, hath seen all that either was ever, or ever shall be, for all things are of one kind, and all like one unto another. Meditate often upon the connection of all things in the world, and upon the mutual relation that they have one unto another, for all things are after a sort folded and involved one within another, 
and by these means all agree well together. For one thing is consequent unto another, by local motion, by natural conspiration and agreement, and by substantial union, or reduction of all substances into one. Fit and accommodate thyself to that estate and to those occurrences, which by the destinies have been annexed unto thee, and love those men whom thy fate it is to live with, but love them true, an instrument, a tool, and utensil, whatsoever it be, if it be fit for the purpose it was made for, it is as it should be though he perchance that made and fitted it, be out of sight, but in things natural, that power which hath framed and fitted them, is and abideth within them still, for which reason she ought also the more to be respected, and we are the more obliged, after this manner also, and in this respect it is, that he that is all in all doth enjoy his happiness. What things soever are not within the proper power and jurisdiction of thine own will either to compass or avoid, if thou shalt propose unto thyself any of those things as either good or evil. And indeed we must needs commit many evils, if we incline to any of these things, more or less, with an opinion of any difference. But if we mind and fancy those things only, as good and bad, which wholly depend of our own wills, there is no more occasion why we should either murmur against the gods, or be at enmity. We all work to one effect, some willingly, and with a rational apprehension of what we do, others without any such knowledge. As I think Heraclitus in a place speaketh of them that sleep, that even they do work in their kind, and do confer to the general operations of the world. One man therefore doth cooperate after one sort, and another after another sort. But even he that doth murmur, and to his power doth resist and hinder, for of such also did the world stand in need. Now do thou consider among which of these thou wilt rank thyself. For as for him who is the administrator of all, he will make good use of thee whether thou wilt or no, and make thee as a part and member of the whole, so to cooperate with him, that but be not thou for shame such a part of the whole, as that vile and ridiculous verse, which Chrysippus in a place doth mention, is a part of the comedy. Kie. Doth either the son take upon him to do that which belongs to the rain, or his son Aesculapius that which unto the earth doth properly belong? How is it with every one of the stars in particular? If so be that the gods have deliberated in particular of those things that should happen unto me, I must stand to their deliberation, as discreet and wise. For that a god should be an imprudent god is a thing hard even to conceive. And why should they resolve to do me hurt? For what profit either unto them or the universe, which they But if so be that they have not deliberated at all, which indeed is very irreligious for any man to believe, for then let us neither sacrifice, nor pray, nor respect it. Now that unto every one is most profitable, which is according to his own constitution and nature, and my nature is, to be rational in all my actions and as a good and natural member of a city and commonwealth towards my fellow members ever to be sociably and kindly disposed my city and country as i am antoninus is rome as a man the whole world those things therefore that are expedient and profitable to those cities are the only things that are good and expedient for me oh, whatsoever in any kind doth happen to any one is expedient to the whole, and thus much to content us might suffice, that it is expedient for the whole in general. But yet this also shalt thou generally perceive, if thou dost diligently take heed, that whatsoever doth happen to any one man or men. And now I am content that the word expedient should more generally be understood of those things which we otherwise call middle things, or things indifferent, as health, wealth, and the like fly, as the ordinary shows of the theatre and of other such places, when thou art presented with them, affect thee, as the same thing still seen, and in the same fashion. For all things, above and below, are still the same, and from the same causes. When then will there be an end, fly, let the several deaths of men of all sorts, 
and of all sorts of professions, and of all sort of nations, be a perpetual object of thy thoughts, so that thou mayst even come down to Philistia, Phubus, and Oregonian. Pass now to other generations. Thither shall we after many changes, where so many brave orators are, where so many grave philosophers. Heraclitus, Pythagoras, Socrates, where so many heroes of the old times, and then so many brave captains of the latter times, and so many kings. After all these where Eudoxus, Hipparchus, Archimedes, where so many other sharp, generous, industrious, subtile, peremptory dispositions. Of all these consider that they long since are all dead and gone. And what do they suffer by it? Nay, they that have not so much as a name remaining, what are they the worse for it? One thing there is, and that only, which is worth our while in this world, and ought by flying. When thou wilt comfort and cheer thyself, call to mind the several gifts and virtues of them whom thou dost daily converse with. As, for example, the industry of the one, for nothing can so much rejoice thee as the resemblances and parallels of several virtues visible and eminent in the dispositions of those who live with thee especially when all and therefore thou must have them always in a readiness Flive. dost thou grieve that thou dost weigh but so many pounds and not three hundred rather just as much reason hast thou to grieve that thou must live but so many years and not longer for as for bulk and substance thou dost content thyself with that proportion of it that is allotted unto thee so shouldst thou for time Tulf. let us do our best endeavours to persuade them but however if reason and justice lead thee to it do it though they be never so much against it but if any shall by force withstand thee and hinder thee in it convert thy virtuous inclination from one object unto another from justice to contented equanimity and cheer for thou didst not set thy mind upon things impossible upon what then that all thy desires might ever be moderated with this due kind of reservation and this thou hast and mayst always obtain whether the thing desired be in thy power or no and what do i care for more if that for which i was born and brought forth into the world to rule all my desires with reason and discretion may be clever the ambitious supposeth another man's act praise and applause to be his own happiness the voluptuous his own sense and feeling but he that is wise his own act polite. it is in thy power absolutely to exclude all manner of conceit and opinion as concerning this matter and by the same means to exclude all grief and sorrow from thy soul for as for the things and objects themselves they of themselves have no such power, whereby to beget and force upon us any opinion at all. Chloe, lose thyself when any man speaks unto thee, so to hearken unto him, as that in the interim thou give not way to any other thoughts, that so thou mayst, as far as is possible, seem fixed and flicks, that which is not good for the bee hive, cannot be good for the bee. Oh, will either passengers or patients find fault and complain either the one if they be well carried or the others if well cured do they take care for any more than this how many of them who came into the world at the same time when i did are already gone out of it lying to them that are sick of the jaundice honey seems bitter and to them that are bitten by a mad doll with the water terrible, and to children a little ball seems a fine thing. And why then should I be angry? Or do I think that error and false opinion is less powerful to make men transgress than either color, being immoderate and excessive, to cause the no man can hinder thee to live as thy nature doth require. Nothing can happen unto thee but what the common good of nature doth require. Live what manner of men they be whom they seek to please, and what to get, and by what actions. How soon time will cover and bury all things, and how many it hath already buried. What is wickedness? 
it is that which many time and often thou hast already seen and known in the world and so oft as anything doth happen that might otherwise trouble thee let this memento presently come to thy mind that it is that which thou hast already often seen and known generally above and below thou shalt find but the same things the very same things whereof ancient stories middle age stories and fresh stories are full whereof towns are full and houses full there is nothing that is new all things that are are both usual and of little continuance ay what fear is there that thy dogmata or philosophical resolutions and conclusions should become dead in thee and if it be why then am i troubled those things that are without my understanding are nothing to it at all and that is it only which doth properly concern me be always in this mind and thou wilt be right i that which most men would think themselves most happy for and would prefer before all things if the gods would grant it unto them after their deaths thou mayst whilst thou livest grant see the things of the world again as thou hast already seen them for what is it else to live again public shows and solemnities with much pomp and vanity stage plays flocks and herds conflicts and contentions if word after word every one by itself must the things that are spoken be conceived and understood and so the things that are dumb purpose after purpose every one and as in matter of purposes and actions we must presently see what is the proper use and relation of every one so of words must we be as ready to consider of every one what is the true is my reason and understanding sufficient for this or no if it be sufficient without any private applause or public ostentation as of an if it be not and that otherwise it belong not unto me particularly as a private duty i will either give it over and leave it to some other that can better effect it for whatsoever i do either by myself or with some other the only thing that i must intend is that it be good and expedient for the public for as for praise consider how many who once were much commended are now already quite forgotten ye they that commended them how even they themselves are long since dead and gone. Be not therefore ashamed, whensoever thou must use the help of others. For whatsoever it be that life upon thee to effect, thou must propose it unto thyself, as the scaling of walls is unto a soldier. And what if thou through either lamness or some other impediment art not able to reach unto the top of the battlements alone, which with the help of another thou mayst, wilt thou therefore give it over, or go a let not things future trouble thee. For if necessity so require that they come to pass, thou shalt, whensoever that is, be provided for them with the same reason, by which whatsoever is now present is made both tolerable and acceptable. All things are linked and knitted together, and the knot is sacred, neither is there anything in the world that is not kind and natural in regard of any other thing, or that hath not some kind of reference. For all things are ranked together, and by that decency of its due place and order that each particular doth observe they all concur together to the making of one and the same cosmos or world for all things throughout there is but one and the same order and through all things one and the same god the same substance and the same law there is one common reason and one common truth that belongs unto all reasonable creatures for neither is there save one perfection of all creatures that are of the same kind, and part via whatsoever is material, doth soon vanish away into the common substance of the whole, and whatsoever is formal, or whatsoever doth animate that which is material, via to a reasonable creature, the same action is both according to nature, and according to reason, ix, straight of itself, not made straight as several members in one body united 
so are reasonable creatures in a body divided and dispersed, all made and prepared for one common operation. And this thou shalt apprehend the better, if thou shalt use thyself often to say to thyself, I am Melos, or a member of the mass and body of reasonable substances. But if thou shalt say I am Meros, or a part, thou dost not yet love men from thy heart. The joy that thou takest in the exercise of bounty is not yet grounded upon a due ratiocination and right apprehension of the nature of things. Thou dost exercise it as yet upon this ground barely, as a thing convenient and fitting, not as doing good to thyself when thou dost good unto others. Five, of things that are external, happen what will to that which can suffer by external accidents. Those things that suffer let them complain themselves, if they will. As for me, as long as I conceive no such thing, that that which has happened is evil, I have no hurt. Five, whatsoever any man either doth or saith, thou must be good, not for any man's sake, but for thine own nature's sake. As if either gold, or the emerald, or thying, this may ever be my comfort and security, my understanding, that ruleth over all, will not of itself bring trouble and vexation upon itself. This I say, it will not put itself in any fear, it will not lead itself into any concupiscence. If it be in the power of any other to compel it to fear or to grieve, it is free for him to use his power. But sure if itself do not of itself, through some false opinion or supposition incline itself to any such disposition, there is no fear. For as for the body, why should I make the grief of my body to be the grief of my mind? If that itself can either fear or complain, let it. But as for the soul, which indeed can only be truly sensible of either fear or grief, to which only it belongs according to its different imaginations and opinions, to admit of I induce her not to any such opinion or persuasion. The understanding is of itself sufficient unto itself, and needs not, if itself doth not bring itself to need, any other thing besides itself, and by consequent as it needs nothing. Tib. What is eudaimonia, or happiness? But a gathos daemon, or a good daemon, or spirit, what then dost thou do here, O opinion? By the gods I thou earnest indeed unto me according to thy ancient wanted manner. It is that that all men have ever been subject unto. That thou camest therefore I am not angry with thee only begone, now that I have found thee what thou art. <laughs> is any man so foolish as to fear change, to which all things that once were not of their being, and what is it that is more pleasing and more familiar to the nature of the universe? How, through the substance of the universe, as through a tarrant pass all particular bodies, being all of the same nature, and all joint workers with the universe itself as in one of our bodies, how many such as Chrysippus, how many such as Socrates, how many such as Epictetus, hath the age of the world long since swallowed up and devoured? Let this be it either. Of all my thoughts and cares, one only thing shall be the object, that I myself do nothing which to the proper constitution of man, either in regard of the thing itself, or in regard of the time when thou shalt have forgotten all things, is at hand. And that time also is at hand, when thou thyself shalt be forgotten by all. Whilst thou art, apply thyself to that especially which unto man as he is a mart, is most proper and agreeable and that is for a man even to love them that transgress against him. This shall be, if at the same time that any such thing doth happen, thou call to mind that they are thy kinsmen, that it is through ignorance and against their wills that they sin, and that but above all things that he hath not done thee any hurt, for that by him thy mind and understanding is not made worse or more vile than it was before. Can the nature of the universe of the common substance of all things, as it were of so much wax hath now perchance formed a horse, and then, destroying that figure, hath new t Now every one of these doth subsist but for a very little while. As for dissolution, 
if it be no grievous thing to the chest or trunk, to be joined together. Why should it be more grievous to be put asunder? An angry countenance is much against nature, and it is oftentimes the proper countenance of them that are at the point of death. 